I was impressed when I first came to the University of New Mexico by the sense of space, by the buildings that shaped the space of the campus. It was a long time ago, and when I walked out in, into the plaza in front of Zimmerman Library, I just thought, oh my God, you just had this monumental sense of space. I will never forget that. decided to study electrical engineering and I realized that I was not able to do calculus at all. I just could not comprehend it. The superintendent of schools was a, had married a cousin of mine and so I told him what had happened but uh, not being able to fathom calculus I must give up my engineering efforts. And she said, well, why don't you think about architecture? It doesn't require calculus. <laughs> Van Dorn Hooker, as the campus architect, was a contemporary architect. And yet, he worked for John Gamim. He started from a, as an architect, from a place of respect for New Mexican architecture, New Mexican, the landscape of New Mexico, the cultural landscapes of New Mexico. As a contemporary architect, however, he realized that it is impossible to replicate time and space. So you can't go back. And so he, as many architects, alluded to the past, but brought the architecture and the landscape and space around the building into the present. He was of the old school where he didn't design the buildings. His job was to bring the best people to the table to design the buildings. And so he respected the people that he hired and, and commissioned to do it. The area that's now the duck pond back in the 60s was a parking lot. And the roads you know, went through there. So it was a, a major controversy when the duck pond was affirmed by the regents as a project uh, because it would take out the parking lot. And there were a lot of uh, faculty and students who argued against it because they wanted that convenient parking. My father saw the duck pond as a, uh, an important element of the, you know, central element of the campus and a defining element of the, the pedestrian core of the campus. Uh, which it, it is really uh, blossomed into that now. It helps pull the campus together. So the, the idea, you know, my father fought for it because it was, I believe, part of the original Warnicke plan to have the, the central water feature of some kind. It's certainly well used. It was uh, highly criticized. <laughs> The editor of the uh, Lobo called it Marina on the Mesa. <laughs> Van Dorn came to us and said, I would like to create this professorship to honor my wife, who was 
one of the very first licensed women architects in New Mexico, and certainly what he would characterize as a wonderful life in design together. And so when Van Dorn established this endowment here uh, at the School of Architecture and Planning, he said he hoped that we would bring contemporary architects and planners to, to the school, to work in the studios with our students, to lecture to the community, to talk about how it is that an architect, urban designer, planner can affect change, great change, and bring great beauty to the place in which they practice and work. And so we have brought world-class um, architects and planners with his endowment through his generosity. I think my father will be remembered in part for his love of New Mexico and you know has supported the, the state and the university archives. He'll be remembered for really the implementation of the plan for the campus. You know that he ensured that it became what it is today and didn't veer off of the essential elements of the original plan uh, as the regents came and went and presidents came and went. So he had that kind of uh, enduring presence, that guiding hand you know, stayed with the university.